okay? So then you get minus k dt by dr equal to r sd over 2. Integrate it again, you get t equal to minus se over 2k r squared over 2 plus c2. Now at this point, you will need only one boundary condition regarding temperature. And you already mentioned that at r equal to capital R, temperature is T0. So then, take it back into equation. T0 is equal to minus Se over 2K of 4K capital R square plus C0, C2, I'm sorry. Then you get C2, plug it back in here, you get temperature profile, okay? And temperature profile would be written in form of temperature difference. All right? This would be your answer. Any question? Am I going too fast? I hope not. All right. The previous example is the simplest one that we can imagine because it has only conduction. Okay? Now we are to introduce convection. The example here is if you have a rod, a solid rod with temperature T0. Outside, you have a sleeve, you know, sleeve, something that you cover the rod. Okay? This is a sleeve. The cylinder, cylindrical um, shell that cover the whole um, rod. In between, right here, you have fluid, maybe oil, some sort of lubrication fluid. Then you can rotate the sleeve outside, just rotate it, just act like ball bearing, just like a bearing, but this one is fluid bearing. Okay? Now, if the layer of the fluid inside the assemb assembly here is small or very thin. You can make approximation of this area and extend it to be this picture. As long as you say that the curvature here is negligible comparing to the thickness of the system or thickness of the liquid here, then you can say that this is liquid thickness and it approximately flat sheet. Okay? So flat sheet here on top is moving with, with velocity Vb. Of course, velocity Vb can be calculated from angle of velocity here. Okay? Outside, temperature is Tb. Inside, this is temperature T0. So if you extend it like this, then you can convert cylindrical problem into rectangular problem our coordinate can be represented by Cartesian coordinate xc like this. Now, I think you are getting ready for examination. So this is just a small test. Is there any momentum transport in this picture? Yes. If we are to solve the velocity profile by using shear balance, what does the shear look like? So it looks like this, right? This will be your shear. 
and direction of the flux should go in which direction? It should go from high velocity to low velocity. So actual direction should go downward, right? But normally when we set up the shear bond, we just put the direction according to the direction of our axis. And then the sign of the result would give you a direction. Okay? Can you guess the velocity profile from this picture? Is it linear, pro linear velocity profile? Is it linear? Can you all see it? See whether it's linear. So this is shell. If you remove it, you, you get linear velocity profile. OK? So velocity profile here is Vz supposed to be equal to Vb x over b. That's linear. At x equal to 0, velocity is 0 because our solid is stationary at the bottom. At x equal to b, velocity is equal to Vb. OK? That's linear velocity profile. Now let me ask you this. This velocity profile was obtained under the procedure that you have learned in momentum part. That means it was done under the assumption of constant density and constant viscosity. Okay? Also under assumption of non oh, under assumption of isothermal system. Now in our actual system, temperature are not the same. So the system is non-isothermal. Question is, can we still get this answer if you consider temperature difference? Yes? Do you think so? Scientifically, of course, not psychologically. If you still obtain the same answer, what kind of assumption would you make to get this answer? <laughs> 